All right, so the objective here is to make this servo spin based on the, uh, the amount of light within the environment. So if I were to um, click on Start Simulation and then click on my photoresistor, this little uh, toggle switch here would allow me to adjust the light from the environment. Right now, there's no interaction or relationship between the photoresistor here, which measures the light, and the servo. But we're going to go ahead and create that interaction. And then we want to override it with this uh, push button. So if I push the button, it should manually um, change direction of your servo. So let's go ahead and see how we can program that. Now here, the first thing I have to do is include my servo because I am using a servo, so I need to include the servo library. You can find that here, or you can simply type in um, hashtag include servo.h. Um, so after that, then you want to create the name for your servo. So you type in the word servo, and then you create the variable for that servo. In this case, I'm going to use my servo. Now, since I'm using a push button, and my push button is connected to digital pin 2, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable, which is an integer variable, and I'm going to set that equal to pin 2. I'm also going to create another integer variable to store some information, and this information is going to be um, based on me pushing the button. And then, last but not least, we have this photoresistor, which I'm just calling photo cell. You can set this equal to A0, since it's connected to this analog pin 0, or you can leave it as is. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is. Now, in your void setup, you need to attach your servo, so whatever you name your servo, whatever you call that variable, and then the pin that it's connected to. In this case, it's connected to pin 9. So we'll go ahead and just type in 9. And since you're pushing the button, it is providing some sort of input, and we're going to read that input, and then we're going to decide what to do. So that's why we have this word input here. And since we want to look at some data, uh, when we print it, we're going to use the serial monitor. So we need to activate that serial monitor by typing serial.begin. In the loop, this is what repeats over and over. So the first thing we want to do is actually read the photoresistor. So we can say, hey, what's up with this photo cell? We're going to go ahead and read it since it's connected to my, since it's connected to analog pin 0. We can go ahead and read analog pin 0. And then now let's go ahead and print those values. And I'm going to print it on a new line, so I'm going to go ahead and type ln. And then let's go ahead and print the values that are being read by this variable called photo cell. And if I run it, I can go ahead and check out my serial monitor. And it's giving me some values here. If I adjust this toggle switch, you'll see those values change. Uh, let's go ahead and identify the max value. In this case, our max value is 974. Usually, whenever you connect to an analog pin, your max value is... 1023. This might be because we have a resistor here. This is a 10K resistor. And this is a 1K resistor. I'm going to change this to a 5K resistor because that's what I have set up in my electronics. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see if we can just simply read the digital pin. Two. So I'm going to do a digital read. So we'll say value digital read. And I want to read what's coming out of pin 2. In this case, we called it button. So I'll just go ahead and say, hey, let's read what's happening with button. And I'm just going to copy and paste that directly underneath. And... We'll go ahead and read the value here, see what it's giving us. And it's giving us a 0. Uh, if I hold it down, it gives me a 1. So what I want to do is I want to utilize that information and say if my value is equal to 1, then I want to spin this servo 
So my servo dot right, that's how you spin it. And we'll spin it maybe 70 degrees. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a serial dot print in here just to see what's going on. So once you have an if statement, here's your condition. If that condition is satisfied, then this is what needs to be executed. And you got to close that with a brace. So if I press my button, then it's going to rotate 7 degrees. Otherwise, we want some other action to occur. And that action is we want the servo to spin based on the uh, light from the environment. So I'm going to say else then servo dot right and I really wanted to spin based on the light from the environment okay actually before I do that you we saw earlier that the max was it's gonna be 1023 but in this case it's 924 so your servo can only spin 180 degrees if I put in here hey whatever the value is of photo cell it's not going to work or it's going to crap out on me because the value is too high, right? You can't spin up 900 and something degrees. So what we need to do is we need to map that information so that way we can change it. So to change your values or to map your values, you identify the variable, in this case, photo cell, and we're going to use this function called map. So we're going to map our photo cell. And the min value is 0, the max value is 1023. And in our case, the min value of our servo is going to be 0 degrees, and the max value of our servo is going to be 180 degrees. So now this variable has stored new information. Those values are going to be from 0 to 180. So let me print that really quickly just to see what happens. I am going to... Uh, let me just delete this. Usually we comment it out, but in this case, it's difficult to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and read what's going on now. And so if I look at my values for my light, you'll notice that the max value is 163. So now we can use that information to spin our servo. So now we're comfortable with spinning our servo. Let me go ahead and paste back my initial if and else statement. <clears throat> And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spin my servo based on based on the actual amount of light here. So we mapped it, so we're good to go. So if I were to, well, if I were to run this, I would get an error because I did not close this else statement. And then I'm going to put a little bit, another delay here of 10 microseconds. And same as over here, a delay of 10 microseconds. Now let's go ahead and see if we can run this. So if I adjust my light here, so this is the light from the environment, right? The simulation. You'll notice that my servo rotates based on the amount of light. And if I were to, let me put this back to zero takes forever to get there to simulate. If I were to press this button, it's going to go to 70 degrees. And you see it's reading 1 because I'm telling it, hey, if I press the button, go ahead and print those values. Otherwise, print the values here from my photo cell. So now it's printing values from my photo cell. So I'm going to stop the simulation. And that's how you how you create the code for this particular activity. So we're spinning the servo based on the amount of light in the environment and then overwriting it with the push button here. 
So next we're going to figure out how to go ahead and upload this to the Arduino and see a real life simulation. So I went ahead and copied and pasted the code we just created into Arduino. And so when you run it, you can see the values that are being generated. So remember it's being mapped from its highest value to 180. And if you shed some light on it, you can see the values decreasing and the servo moving with those decreasing values. And if I press the button, it goes to 70 degrees.